The vaccine that we're producing here at Imperial College is a self-amplifying RNA vaccine. So that means um, it's just got a small part of the genetic code of um, coronavirus inserted into it. Um, that's then um, injected into the arm of the participants um, and it um, sort of inserts itself into their or, or enters into their muscle cells when they become the little factory that produces um, more um, of this RNA and more of the protein. And the protein that we're looking to for the, the muscle cells to produce is a tiny part of the coronavirus uh, structure. So the, the, the virus itself enters the cells through something called a spike protein. Um, and if you've seen the, the, the image on the, the TV and on the news, it's the, it's the little bits that stick out from the outside. And that's what we want the immune um, system to make a response to. So the vaccine sort of mimics this and it, and it makes those tiny little spike proteins. So it's, it's not making the virus itself, it's just making a very tiny part of it. And then um, what we would hope is that the immune response the immune system will see these tiny parts of the virus. Um, it will make the immune response to that. And then should it actually see the real virus, it will remember that it's seen it before, and then it will stop it from entering the bodies and make that person um, unable to, to succumb to the virus and become sick. Um, they will have to be healthy individuals, so they have to pass a full health screen, which will happen within the clinic. Um, so that's routine blood sampling. Um, and they will have to not have had coronavirus. Once they've passed the screening, they will come in for their first vaccination visit. Um, they will have quite a long consultation with one of the, the lead medics to make sure they fully understand everything that they're going to have done. So it will be you know, having bloods taken and, and an immunization. Um, and they'll have to sign a consent form and they'll be read, led through the um, patient information sheet again to, to explain exactly what's going to happen to them. Um, they'll have another health check on the day to make sure they're fine. Um, they will then have some blood taken so that we get um, to know what their um, blood and immune responses against coronavirus looks like on the day that we give them or just before we give them the vaccination. They'll then receive the vaccination and then they will be monitored for an hour post vaccination um, closely by the medics. And then they'll be sent home with um, a diary card and there will be telephone consultations to um, find out how they are feeling, how they're doing, um, and if they've got any symptoms um, such as pain at the area of um, vaccination, which you can get with most vaccinations and things like that. Um, and then subsequent to that, they'll come in um, for um, repeat visits throughout the time course of, of the study to give more blood. Initially, the rollout process will most likely um, will we'll roll it out into to larger phase two and phase three trials. So we'll do several thousand people for those trials. It could be that it's rolled out within hospital settings. So hospital workers who might, might be at higher risk. Within um, Imperial's um, clinical trial labs here um, at St. Mary's Hospital, we are um, we are looking or we will be looking for um, antibodies against the, um, as I mentioned, the spike part of the coronavirus. Um, so if somebody has successfully um, started to develop an immune response against that part, we should be able to detect antibodies to it. And so we'll be assessing the, the levels of their antibodies. Um, and not just the levels, but how good they are, because it's no good if you um, produce lots and lots of antibodies that are a really bad quality. We need to ensure that they are of a good quality as well. So we will also test them to make sure that in our hands, um, they can um, neutralize the virus. And in, a, in a, an experiment that we do here, 
and stop it from um, infecting cells within an incubator that we that we set up in an experiment so we can test to see how good their antibodies are as well we'll also test other um types of immune responses that can that can occur not just antibodies so we'll just monitor everything over the course of, of the vaccination and through to six months follow-up um just to see how long the antibodies last as well so, so the need is there to, to push this vaccine through um, quicker than, than we would do normally, but that doesn't mean that we skip any safety steps. So there's a lot more communication going on between developers and different, different stages of the vaccine trial, so that um, instead of there being any delays, sometimes there's just paperwork delays and things like that, or regulation regulatory delays, it just means that we're at the top of the list for each time a review is needed for anything. Um, so that's how we're kind of moving things faster through from the preclinical stage to, to the clinic. Um, it's not because we're skipping any steps, it's just that we're being prioritized a lot more for the regulatory side. So it will still take, um, you know, 12 to 18 months to get this completely fully rolled, rolled out because we have to ensure that we hit all the safety steps. Anybody who's who's afraid of getting the vaccinations or anything like that, you know, sort of rest assured we do everything we can to make them as safe as possible. Um, you know, we're not, like I said before, we are accelerating this, but that doesn't mean we're skipping any safety steps. So they won't be any less safe than they were before.